Hey, welcome to a new video. In the history of our world, there have been countless mysteries, myths, and legends. Some stories appear to come straight from fairy tales, but what if I were to tell you that some of these legendary discoveries have actually been made? Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. The Excalibur Sword is a legendary weapon, associated with the story of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. According to the legend, King Arthur pulled the sword from a stone, proving his rightful claim to the throne. Excalibur is described as a powerful and magical sword, often depicted with extraordinary properties. It's said to be indestructible, and bestows great strength and victory in battle upon its wielder. There have been various claims that this sword could be real, and some people believe that they've found it. In the Verbas River in Bosnia, a 700-year-old sword was discovered that strongly resembles this legendary Excalibur. The sword was stuck in a rock and was carefully removed by archaeologists, making this find extraordinary. Another similar sword was found by a 7-year-old British girl in Cornwall, England. She found the legendary sword in the Dosmary Pool, believed to be the resting place of King Arthur's Excalibur. Just like the legendary Excalibur sword, another similar sword was miraculously discovered in a rock. The sword belongs to St. Galgano, a medieval Italian knight who thrust the sword into a rock, and it's now a pilgrimage site and a symbol of faith and peace in Tuscany, Italy. An intriguing discovery in ancient Kish in Iraq has raised questions about a mysterious creature called Civitherium. This extinct creature once roamed the Indian subcontinent in Africa, and it's believed to have disappeared millions of years ago. However, recent evidence suggests that it may not have gone extinct until relatively recently. Striking rock paintings in the Sahara and central West India depict images resembling this creature, possibly as recent as 8,000 years ago. An exciting discovery in ancient Kish has added even more mystery to this prehistoric animal. Archaeologists found there a copper rain ring dating back to around 3500 BC. Typically, such rings depict draft animals like horses, but this ring shows an antlered animal, resembling the Civitherium. The double antlers with smaller horns above the eyes also bear a strong resemblance to the extinct creature. Thanks to those striking double antlers with small horns above the eyes, which closely resemble the Civitherium, researchers have been able to uncover more info. This would mean that this animal lived longer than we had initially thought. The Flying Dutchman is a ghost ship said to haunt the seas, particularly around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. The origin of the legend can be traced back to the 17th century. The story tells of a Dutch ship under the command of Captain Hendrik van der Decken, or simply the Dutchman. The ship was on a perilous journey around the Cape of Good Hope when it encountered a fierce storm. The ship was on a perilous journey around the Cape of Good Hope when it encountered a fierce storm. Despite pleas and warnings from the crew, the captain refused to turn back or seek shelter until Judgment Day. His disobedience invoked a curse that condemned him and his ship to sail the seas forever. The Flying Dutchman is often described as a ghostly ship, shrouded in mist and appearing as a dark, eerie vessel with tattered sails. Encountering the ship was considered a bad omen among sailors, believed to bring misfortune and doom. Some accounts even claim that attempting to communicate or make contact with the ship resulted in the observer being drawn into death and forever becoming a part of the cursed crew. One of the most famous sightings of the Flying Dutchman was by Prince George of Wales, who would later become king. Deeply hidden in Upholland and Wigan, England, and carefully guarded by local residents lies the mysterious Dragon's Eye Cave. This hidden treasure is only accessible through a small opening in the cave floor, aptly named The Window. The location of this cave remains a well-kept secret, shared only with a select group of adventurers and the vigilant residents who serve as its guardians. At the heart of the cave awaits a fascinating sight for explorers, the breathtaking Dragon's Eye. This remarkable formation is believed to have originated from an ancient mine shaft transformed into a natural wonder. The patterns in the rocks inside the cave have led to the creation of a spherical structure that resembles something straight out of a J.R.R. Tolkien novel. This illusion is created by the clever interplay of light and camera angles, making it seem as though the eye of a mystical dragon is glazing down upon you. To reach this remarkable vantage point, adventurers must maneuver through the window in the cave floor, requiring climbing and descending. Solomon Shamir is mentioned in ancient Jewish texts and folklore, particularly in the context of the construction of Solomon's temple. According to the legend, the Shamir possessed the unique ability to cut or shape hard stones, such as diamonds or even the hardest of all stones, the Shamir stone itself. It was said to be a small worm-like creature that could effortlessly cut through rocks and metals without the use of tools or exerting force. The existence of the Shamir was attributed to King Solomon, who, as the story goes, needed it to build the temple in Jerusalem. Various versions of the legend describe how King Solomon obtained the Shamir. According to one version, the king sent his trusted servants to capture the Shamir in its natural habitat or to discover its secret. 
Another version suggests that Solomon himself possessed the knowledge to control the Shamir and used it for the construction of the temple. The nature and origin of the Shamir, however, remain shrouded in mystery. Some interpretations describe it as a supernatural being specifically created by God. The Bayou Tapestry is a medieval artwork documenting the invasion and conquest of England in 1066 by the Normans from northern France. The purpose behind the tapestry's creation remains uncertain, but it's presumed to date from the 1170s and may have been crafted in Canterbury, England by English embroiders. The tapestry was likely intended for display in the Bayeux Cathedral, possibly in commemoration of its dedication in July 1077. Contrary to what the name suggests, the tapestry is not woven, but consists of 58 carefully embroidered scenes on beige linen cloth. Standing at approximately 20 inches or 50 centimeters in height, and an impressive length of 223 feet or 68 meters, the tapestry depicts a series of events leading up to the famous Battle of Hastings on October 14th, 1066. The scene includes battles, a funeral, a coronation, two feasts, shipbuilding, a fleet crossing the English Channel, the deaths of two kings, Norman cavalry, English foot soldiers, and numerous bodies on the battlefield. Although the Bayeux Tapestry has long been associated with the Bayeux Cathedral, some scholars suggest it may fit better as a secular context. Some scholars suggest it may fit better in secular context, such as a palace. Sesho Seki, also known as the Killing Stone, is a legendary stone, located in the Nasu region of Tochiki Prefecture in Japan. According to the legend, the stone emits a malevolent aura that causes any living being that comes into contact with it to die instantly. Birds flying over the stone are said to fall to the ground, and even the grass nearby withers. The origin of the stone is associated with the folk tale from the Heian period, which spanned from 794 to 1185. The story tells of a monstrous nine-tailed fox known as Tamamo no Mei, who took on the form of a beautiful woman and served as a lady-in-waiting to the Emperor of Japan. However, her true identity and nefarious intentions were discovered, and she was banished. It's said that when she was executed, her malevolent spirit remained behind and transformed into the Sesho Seki. The stone became a symbol of her curse and the dark energy she possessed. Despite its reputation as a place to avoid, the stone remains a popular tourist attraction due to its mythical significance and eerie reputation. In 2022, it was reportedly split in half, raising concerns that an angry spirit had been released. Humans and dinosaurs coexisting side by side? At first glance, this seems impossible, as human evolution occurred much later than that of the dinosaurs. But what if we told you that recent research suggests that placental mammals, including humans, dogs, and bats, actually originated during the Cretaceous period and briefly lived alongside dinosaurs? These findings have stirred scientists because they have raised doubts about when they appeared on Earth whether it was before or after the extinction of dinosaurs. Fossils of placental mammals had previously only been found in rock layers less than 66 million years old, corresponding to the cataclysmic impact of an asteroid that changed the planet. However, through careful analysis of fossils, researchers have now confirmed that placental mammals did indeed exist before the mass extinction, known as Cretaceous Paleogene Boundary. Interestingly, the study demonstrates that these mammals only truly flourished and diversified after the asteroid impact wiped out the dinosaurs. This suggests that the absence of dinosaurs enabled placental mammals to thrive and thus evolve. According to the accounts in the Gospel of John in the New Testament, a Roman soldier pierced the side of Jesus with a spear during the crucifixion. This spear is traditionally identified as the Holy Lance. The Holy Lance is believed to possess significant religious and mystical powers. According to medieval Christian legends, whoever possesses the spear has the power to conquer nations and determine the fate of empires. It's said to grant invincibility to the one who wields it in battle and bring victory in conflicts. Throughout history, various rulers and leaders have sought to obtain the Holy Lance. Legends and claims about its whereabouts have arisen over the centuries. It was believed to be in possession of Constantine the Great and other prominent historical figures. One notable mention of the Holy Lance is associated with the Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne, who is said to have discovered the spear. He believed its power guaranteed his victories in battle. Adolf Hitler, the leader of Nazi Germany, was rumored to be obsessed with acquiring the Holy Lance. Today, the Holy Lance is preserved in St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City, although the Catholic Church does not make any claims about its authenticity. Without concrete skeletal remains or physical descriptions in the New Testament, earlier depictions of Jesus were mainly the result of an artist's interpretation and the standards of the time. The iconic image of Jesus with a beard only emerged around 400 AD, perhaps to symbolize his wisdom, as philosophers of that time were often depicted with facial hair. Medieval European art often depicted Jesus with brown hair and fair skin, and this portrayal became even more prominent during the Italian Renaissance. 
with famous works like Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. In contrast to this popular depiction, recent forensic reconstructions suggest that Jesus likely had a darker complexion and short, dark, curly hair. Richard Neve, a retired medical artist, based his reconstruction on three Semitic skulls from Israel and used modern forensic techniques to determine this possible appearance. The approach combines cultural and archaeological data with forensic methods, commonly used in identifying unknown individuals. While this reconstruction doesn't necessarily define Jesus as black, it indicates that he likely had a darker skin tone and curly hair than traditionally depicted. The Hand of Glory is a fascinating object from folklore and occult traditions. It's believed to be the severed hand of a criminal, which was then preserved and used for various magical purposes. According to legend, this hand possesses mystical powers that make those who possess it invisible. It's said that the hand can be activated by using specific incantations or by lighting candles made from the fat of the criminal. The hand has a long history and appears in various European folklore and occult practices. It's believed to be a powerful tool for thieves, allowing them to commit crimes unnoticed. The hand was often displayed in homes or institutions as a protective amulet, keeping evil spirits at bay or preventing burglaries. In addition to the properties of invisibility, the hand was also associated with divination. It was believed that the hand could reveal hidden treasures or provide insights into the future when used in conjunction with other magical rituals. While the origin and authenticity are unclear, historical records do exist of such objects being bought and sold. The Sehut monolith, located at the archaeological site of Sehut in Peru, is an intriguing artifact from the time of the Inca Empire. This massive stone monolith once stood atop Conchaca and was part of an enclosed sanctuary. The location, known as the Place of Orientation, is believed to have been one of the four sacred oracles of Apurimac. What truly makes the monolith remarkable is its upper surface, which displays over 200 zoomorphic and geometric figures. These sculptures include reptiles, felines, shellfish, frogs, and various geometric designs. Some experts suggest that the choice of these animals was symbolic to the Incas, with felines representing Cusco, the capital of the Incas, and the elite. In addition to the zoomorphic figures, the sculptures also feature geometric designs resembling terraces, ponds, rivers, tunnels, and irrigation channels. This has led to the theory that the Sihu monolith served as a scale model of the landscape and may have been used by Inca engineers to study water flows and plan and execute public water projects. Despite the significance of the Sehut monolith, its original placement remains a mystery. According to the myth, Pandora was the first woman created by the gods. Zeus, the king of the gods, gave Pandora a box as a gift, but warned her never to open it. However, Pandora couldn't resist her curiosity and opened the box, unleashing troubles and miseries into the world. These troubles included disease, plagues, sorrow, and various forms of human suffering. When Pandora quickly realized her mistake and tried to close the box, only one thing remained inside, hope. The story of Pandora's box is often interpreted as the cautionary tale about the consequences of curiosity and the existence of evil in the world. If this box were ever found, would you dare to open it? Let me know in the comments. A notable example is the spindle-shaped artifacts found near a river in Russia in 1991. These miniature structures have puzzled the scientific community for years, as they seem to suggest an ancient culture capable of developing nanotechnology as far back as 300,000 years ago. They were originally discovered during geological research associated with gold mining in the Ural Mountains. They include coils, spirals, shafts, and other unidentified components. What makes this discovery even more remarkable is that some suggest that the artifacts are remnants of test rockets launched from the nearby space station. However, a report from the Moscow Institute suggests that they're too old to be modern products. These artifacts were found at depths ranging from 10 to 40 feet, or 3 to 12 meters, within a geological layer dating from 20,000 to 318,000 years ago. But how were people able to create such small parts? And what were they used for? Some speculate that the discovery indicates an advanced level of technology among humans during the Pleistocene era, while others suggest they may potentially be the work of extraterrestrial beings. The Book of Toth is a mythical book said to contain profound knowledge and secrets of the ancient Egyptians. Its origin is shrouded in mystery. It's believed to have been written by Thoth himself, an ancient Egyptian god of wisdom and magic, who is considered the inventor of writing. The book is said to be made of gold and engraved with sacred hieroglyphs. Its contents purportedly include knowledge on various subjects, such as magic, astrology, medicine, cosmology, and the nature of the gods. It's often described as the source of powerful spells, incantations, and rituals that grant the reader immense power and insight. It's also considered a repository of hidden truths and insights into the mysteries of the universe. The book is mentioned in Egyptian mythology in various contexts, 
It's believed to have played a role in the creation of the world, and in judging souls in the afterlife. According to legend, Thoth used this knowledge from the book to restore the Eye of Horus and defeated his adversary, the Serpent Apep. Nestled in the heart of the American Southwest amid the rugged terrain of New Mexico lies the mysterious relic that has puzzled scholars for centuries. It's known as the Los Lunas Decalogue Stone. Carved into the surface of this weathered rock are inscriptions resembling ancient Hebrew script. The stone is estimated to be about 500 to 800 years old. The exact age is uncertain, but it's believed to have been carved sometime between the 12th and 14th centuries. Some say they tell a story of biblical proportions, while others dismiss them as a hoax. This inscription resembles a version of the Ten Commandments. But how could such a relic find its way to the New World? Perhaps it's evidence of a pre-Columbian Hebrew presence in America. Or it's possible that it's just a forgery designed to deceive. The Argo was a legendary ship from Greek mythology that played a significant role in the story of Jason and the Argonauts. It was named after its builder, Argus. The tale of the Argo revolves around Jason, a hero tasked of obtaining the Golden Fleece from the distant land of Colchis. To accomplish this task, Jason assembled a group of skilled and adventurous heroes, known as the Argonauts. They embarked on a journey aboard the Argo, which became their means of transportation and a central element of their quest. The ship was crafted by Argus, the son of the god Arrester, under the guidance of the goddess Athena. It was constructed from wood. It was constructed from wood from the sacred forest of Dodona and possessed exceptional qualities such as speed and durability. This grand vessel featured multiple rowing oars and a single mast with a large square sail. It had a distinctive figurehead at the bow, often depicted as a ram's head, and at the stern it was adorned with the sculpture of the goddess Hera. The crew consisted of the Argonauts, a group of heroic individuals chosen by Jason to accompany him. Among the most famous Argonauts were Heracles, Orpheus, Castor, and Pollux, and many others. The Dashka Stone is an extremely controversial artifact discovered in 1999 that's baffled scientists ever since. Some claim the stone contains the blueprints used by the architect of the world itself. Russian experts have even suggested that the Dashka Stone could astonishingly be 120 million years old. The Dashka Stone, also known as the map of the creator, not only depicts the Ural Mountains, but also a series of impressive civil engineering projects. These include 7,500 miles or 12,000 kilometers of canals, several dams, and hieroglyphic inscriptions of unknown origin. The astonishing accuracy and perspective of the map suggests that it was made from an aerial point of observation. Although the hieroglyphs on the stone have yet to be deciphered, they are believed to be related to an ancient form of Chinese. The Dashka stone measures 5 feet or 148 centimeters in height, as well as 3.5 feet or 106 centimeters in width, and 0.5 feet or 16 centimeters in thickness, with a weight of up to 1 ton. It's composed of three layers. The first layer, approximately 18 centimeters thick, consists of a cement ceramic composition based on dolomite. The second layer, about 0.8 inches or 2.5 cm. The second layer is about 0.8 inches thick, and it's made of diapsidic glass enriched with silicon. Finally, the third layer, only a few millimeters thick, is composed of a calcium porcelain mixture. This could potentially be the world's oldest and most extensive map. But who created it and why remains a mystery. In the biblical tale of David and Goliath, the young shepherd David famously defeated the giant warrior Goliath using a sling and a stone. It was a simple weapon consisting of a piece of rope or leather with a pouch in the center to hold the projectile. By swinging it and releasing one end, the projectile could be launched at a high speed toward the target. But what if we told you that this biblical object may have been found? An ancient Greek sling dating back 2,200 years was discovered near the city of Yavn in Israel. It measured 1.73 inches or 4.4 centimeters in length and featured a Greek inscription that can be translated as victory to Heracles and Hora. The presence of this inscription led to speculation that the weapon might have been used as a form of psychological warfare against enemies. These were specially crafted projectiles used to enhance their accuracy and effectiveness. Often made of stone or lead, they were marked with the commander's name, insults to the enemy, or encouraging words. The Fuenta Magna is a significant archaeological discovery made in 1958 near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. This large stone bowl is beautifully engraved with an anthropomorphic character such as animal motifs. This large stone bowl is beautifully engraved with characters and animal motifs. What's striking is that it contains two types of scripts, a Proto-Sumerian ancient alphabet and a local language of the ancient Pucara civilization. This artifact is often referred to as the Rosetta Stone of America. The Fuente Magna was accidentally discovered by a farmer on a private estate belonging to the Monhan family. A Bolivian archaeologist named Max attempted to decipher the inscriptions, but failed. The bowl remained stored for about 40,000 years, until researchers met a local resident named Maximiliano. 
who recognized the bowl and revealed that he had used it to feed his pigs, unaware of its significance. The inscriptions on the bowl were eventually translated, suggesting that it was used for libations to the goddess Nia to ask for fertility. It's believed that the Fuente Magna was made by Sumerians, who settled in Bolivia after 2500 BC. This raises intriguing questions about a possible connection between the Sumerians and the ancient inhabitants of the Andes, who were thousands of miles or kilometers apart. The Vajra is a symbolic and ritual weapon in various religious traditions, particularly in Buddhism and Hinduism. The term Vajra translates to diamond or thunderbolt in Sanskrit, emphasizing its indestructible and powerful nature. In Buddhism, the Vajra holds significant spiritual and ritual significance. It's considered a symbol of enlightenment, divine power, and the unbreakable nature of reality. The Vajra is often depicted as a short metal scepter with spherical heads at each end, sometimes with additional prongs. Its two spherical heads symbolize the union of wisdom and compassion, the male and female aspects, or the methods of spiritual practice. According to some reports, the object has been found, but whether it's actually the mythical object remains a mystery to this day. Canossus, located just outside the city of Heraclean, has numerous connections to Greek mythology, including the tales of Theseus and the Minotaur. One reason for our limited knowledge of the Minoan civilization is the deconstruction and subsequent reconstruction of Canossus. Canossus itself was destroyed and rebuilt at least twice, with the palace also being rebuilt. After the final destruction by fire, the city was abandoned and eventually forgotten. It was not until 1878 when Sir Arthur Evans rediscovered Canossus. According to some versions, the palace itself was the labyrinth, a conclusion supported by Arthur Evans during his excavations. Other stories suggest that the labyrinth was beneath the palace. A popular version suggests that King Minos hired the famous architect and inventor Daedalus to design the palace in such a way that anyone who entered would be hopelessly lost. Suspecting that Daedalus might reveal the secrets of the maze, King Minos imprisoned him and his son Icarus in a tower. However, they managed to make wings from bird feathers and wax, with which they escaped from the tower. Unfortunately, Icarus flew too close to the sun, causing the wax to melt him and plummet him to his death. Thor's hammer, also known as Mjolnir, is a symbol associated with the Norse god Thor in Norse mythology. According to Norse mythology, Thor's hammer played a crucial role in protecting Asgard, the heavenly home of the gods from giants. The hammer was believed to be an incredibly powerful weapon, capable of flattening mountains. It was also associated with religious rituals and used in ceremonies to bless marriages and births. The significance of Thor's hammers in Viking culture is emphasized by its frequent appearance alongside Christian crosses on amulets. This combination of symbols provided double protection for the wearer, and we might have actually found it. The discovery of Thor's hammer on the island of Loland in Denmark has been a significant archaeological find, if it's authentic. The artifact was unearthed in Kobolev, Loland, and is believed to date back to the 10th century. Believe it or not, the Nazis once desperately sought Thor's hammer. Heinrich Himmler, in particular, made significant efforts to locate the hammer because he believed it was a highly advanced weapon. In 2018, while searching for scientific equipment left by the Baden expedition from 1800 to 1803, Australian filmmakers made a surprising discovery in a remote Western Australia. Instead of finding traces of Napoleonic exploration, they unearthed a 6-inch or 15-centimeter tall bronze Buddha statue, weighing just over 2.2 pounds or 1 kilogram. Experts believe that the Buddha statue was likely made in China several centuries ago, during the Ming Dynasty. The Australian filmmakers preparing to make a documentary about French exploration of Australia used metal detectors to search the area. Experts have suggested two possible explanations for the presence of the Buddha statue in Western Australia. The most intriguing explanation is that it may have arrived during the Ming treasure voyages of 1421. This theory suggests that the Chinese visited the region nearly 200 years ago before the Dutch explorer Dirk Hartog landed in 1616. Another possibility is that the statue came to the northwest coast of Australia in the, in the 150 years or so since the 1870s, when it was known that the Chinese were coming to the area. The Seal of Solomon is a symbol associated with King Solomon, a biblical figure known for his wisdom and magical abilities. The seal holds significant cultural and religious importance in Judaism, Islam, and various occult traditions. In Jewish and Islamic traditions, it's often depicted as a six-pointed star formed by two interlocking triangles. It's believed to be a magical signet ring, used by King Solomon to control demons, command spirits, and protect against evil forces. Folklore states that the ring granted Solomon the ability to communicate with animals and understand their languages. Throughout history, there has been claims and legends related to the discovery of artifacts or objects linked to King Solomon or his seal. 
In October 2017, Turkish police claimed to have found the seal after arresting a smuggler of ancient artifacts. Along with the seal, they discovered five golden tablets, a golden bull figurine, and a bronze amulet, both with Hebrew inscriptions. In northwest Australia in 2017, the world's largest dinosaur footprint was discovered, nearly 6 feet or 1.75 meters long. The footprint belonged to a sauropod, a long-necked herbivorous dinosaur, surpassing the previous record of a 3.8-foot or 1.15-meter-long footprint found in Bolivia, belonging to a carnivorous dinosaur. This remarkable find was on the Dempier Peninsula, where a total of 21 different dinosaur footprints have also been found, some dating back to as far as 140 million years ago. This discovery is considered the most diverse dinosaur footprint fauna ever recorded. The ideal conditions on the peninsula allow for the creation and preservation of these tracks, making the find truly spectacular. According to lead researcher Dr. Steve Salisbury, someone traveling 130 million years back in time would have seen several dinosaur species along this coastline. In addition to the enormous sauropod footprint, this discovery is also quite significant, because it provides the first confirmed evidence of Stegosaurus in Australia. The Ring of Gyges is a mythical artifact mentioned in Plato's Republic, a philosophical text written in ancient Greece. The story of the ring is presented as a thought experiment, exploring the nature of morality and the corrupting influence of power. According to the story, Gyges was a shepherd who discovered a magical ring while tending his flock. This ring had the power to grant its wearer the ability to become invisible at will. With this newfound power, Gyges realized that he could act without fear of being caught or being held accountable for his actions. With his new magical ring, he decided to seduce the queen, murder the king, and proclaim himself as the king. Thanks to the power of the ring, he could act as he pleased, free from any consequences or judgment. Gyges was once a simple shepherd, but was transformed into a ruthless and power-hungry ruler by the ring. What would you do if you had this ring? Let me know in the comments. Mitla is an archaeological site in Oaxaca, Mexico, known for its unique mosaics adorning various buildings. The site has an intriguing history, having been used by various pre-Columbian cultures, including the Zapotecs and Mixtecs. The original function of Mitla is believed to be a burial site, as indicated by its name, Mictlan, meaning place of the dead, or underworld. Visible remains of the site date from the period between 200 and 900 AD, where it was under Zapotec rule. Unlike the tesserae-based mosaics of the Romans, the mosaics in Mitla were made using stone-cut pieces inlaid on panels, known as fretwork. These mosaics feature step and fret designs similar to those seen in ancient civilizations, such as the Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians. The carved symbols found in the Mitla mosaics have sparked speculation among researchers, with some suggesting that these symbols may contain a coded language yet to be deciphered. The Lamp of Aladdin is a fascinating tale. Although originally part of the collection of stories known as One Thousand and One Nights, it has grown into a popular legend in its own right. The lamp itself is often depicted as a small, beautifully crafted golden object with intricate engravings. We're all familiar with Aladdin's lamp. Rubbing the golden lamp summons a genie who will grant you three wishes. It's said to possess incredible powers, and its discovery brings both luck and misfortune. People have wanted to own Aladdin's lamp so much that it has actually happened in real life. An Indian doctor was duped by two men into buying a magical lamp, with promises that the lamp would bring him wealth and health. They even pretended to summon spirits in a spooky scene to further convince him. They ultimately managed to sell the magical lamp for $41,000. Do you believe that this lamp exists, and what are the three things that you would wish for? Let me know in the comments. Near Lake Titicaca in the Andes Mountains of Peru lies Aramu Muru, also known as Puerta de Hayumaca, or the Gate of the Gods. It's a mysterious archaeological site, discovered in 1996 by a local guy named Jose Luis Delgado Mamani. This enigmatic structure, carved into the Hayumaca Mountain, has become one of the most controversial and intriguing sites in South America. The mountain near Lake Titicaca is believed to have been an important place of worship and pilgrimage for the Inca civilization. Within this mountain lies Aramu Muru, a large door-like structure carved from solid rock. The Gate of the Gods stands approximately 23 feet or 7 meters high, and 23 feet or 7 meters wide. With a T-shaped design and circular recess in the middle, some speculate that the recess may have served ceremonial or astronomical purposes. There's also those who believe it was made by an ancient pre-Inca civilization, while others suggest extraterrestrial origins. According to indigenous legends, heroes from the past would pass through this gate to meet their gods, to obtain immortality and live alongside them. It's also said that some men return through the gate to Earth with their gods to oversee their kingdoms. The Aegis is a legendary object associated with Greek mythology, primarily attributed to Zeus, the king of the gods, and Athena, the goddess of wisdom and warfare. 
It's often depicted as a shield or a cloak made from the skin of a divine creature, such as a goat or gorgon. In Greek mythology, the Aegis served as a powerful symbol of divine authority and protection. It was believed to possess supernatural properties and was used by the gods to shield themselves and their allies in times of conflict. The Aegis was often described as radiant, adorned with terrifying decorations, and capable of inspiring fear in enemies or providing protection against various forms of harm. The terrifying visage of the Gorgon is believed to have the power to turn enemies into stone. The Aegis was also said to possess various supernatural abilities, including unleashing thunder and lightning. Mihendra Parvato, one of the early capitals of the Khmer Empire, earned the nickname the Lost City. Limited knowledge about this ancient city comes from the inscriptions found at other locations, as the actual location remained elusive. The Lost City posed a significant challenge to researchers due to its remote and difficult to access nature, as well as dense vegetation and potential landmines from the rogue regime. In 2019, an international team unveiled the results of an ambitious, years-long research campaign, using airborne laser scanning and ground surveys to identify this lost city. The team mapped out an extensive urban network dating back to the 9th century. They revealed a complex urban network stretching of up to 31 square miles or 50 square kilometers, with a grid-like pattern of linear axes. The ancient Khmer people had significantly modified the landscape, constructing features such as ponds, reservoirs, canals, roads, temples, and rice fields, and among other structures. The discovery of a clay mask depicting a young man in burial mound number 6 has fascinated Russian archaeologists. Excavated in Kakassia in 1968, the mask stood out as a remarkable find among cremated individuals. X-ray technology at the time hinted at something unusual with the bones inside the clay head, but further investigation was impossible without destroying the relic. Decades later, scientists revisited this mystery and discovered that the bones inside the mask were not human, but instead belonged to a ram. The mask originates from the Tagore culture, known for its elaborate burial practices, such as large pit graves containing hundreds of bodies cremated. The heads of the deceased were covered with clay to create new faces on their skulls, often coated with gypsum. One theory suggests that the Tagore people might have used the ram remains as a symbolic substitute for a man whose body was lost or could not be found. This ensured the individual could make their journey to the afterlife alongside their peers. Another theory proposes that the false burial was meant to give the man a fresh start or a new status symbolized by the ram disguise. Rams held significant cultural and religious significance. During the Muromachi period, Japan experienced significant political and social unrest. The reputation of the Muromasa sword for bloodshed coincided with the violent nature of that time, making it a subject of fear. The Muromasa sword is a legendary Japanese sword that has garnered both admiration and infamy throughout history. Originating from the Muramasa school of swordsmiths, it was crafted by the renowned swordsmith Sengo Muramasa, who lived between the 14th and 16th centuries. The Muramasa sword is characterized by high quality craftsmanship. The Muramasa sword is characterized by high quality craftsmanship, sharpness, and a distinctive style. Muramasa swords were highly sought after in their time and were often favored by samurai warriors. However, the Muramasa sword is also associated with a legend that suggests it possesses a curse or malevolent energy. According to folklore and historical accounts, it's believed that these swords have a bloodthirsty nature and that their blades hunger for violence. One famous story involves Takugawa Ieyasu, a prominent figure in Japanese history, who reportedly struck by a Muramasa sword. It's said that after the incident, he banned the use of Muramasa swords, considering them too dangerous. With a pouch large enough to carry an adult human, the Diprotodon, a marsupial closely related to the modern wombat, holds the distinction of being the largest known marsupial ever. In 2012, a significant discovery was made in Australia, a mass grave containing approximately 50 skeletons of this creature. This find offers valuable insights into the extinction of these prehistoric giant wombats and their coexistence with indigenous people in Australia. The creature was once widespread throughout Australia and coexisted with indigenous populations for thousands of years before becoming extinct around 25,000 years ago. These marsupials were herbivores, primarily feeding on plants. The exact reason for their extinction is unclear. The mass grave found was discovered at the South Walker Creek Mine in central Queensland. It's believed that these ancient creatures perished after becoming trapped in the swamp. The concept of magical footwear with extraordinary properties can be found in legends and folklore from various cultures. For example, in Norse mythology, the god Loki possesses a pair of magical shoes that grant him incredible speed. The story of the Seven Miles Boots is a popular theme in folklore and fairy tales. It revolves around a magical pair of boots that grant the wearer the ability to cover great distances with a single stride, approximately 7 miles or 11 kilometers per step. 
The boots are said to provide incredible speed and the ability to effortlessly traverse vast landscapes. The story of the boots can be traced back to European folklore, particularly in tales from France and Germany. It's been passed down through generations in various forms, appearing in fairy tales and children's literature. They also represent the human desire for speed and the ability to overcome barriers and easily reach distant goals. Vituvan Coil is a rock-cut temple located in the town in southern India. Vituvan Coil is a rock-cut temple located in a town in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu. This temple was constructed during the 8th century AD and it was dedicated to the Hindu god Shiva. It was built by the Pandya dynasty. The Pandyas ruled over significant territories, including parts of present-day southern India and Sri Lanka. The upper portion of the temple showcases intricate sculptures of deities. These include Uma, the goddess of fertility, love, beauty, marriage, and children, as well as Nandi, the gatekeeper and city of Kalaisa, the abode of Lord Shiva. But how did this temple come into being? According to legend, the construction stemmed from rivalry between a father and son, both skilled sculptors. The father built the Vedavan coil, while the son constructed a shrine for Murugan. The son mocked his father, claiming that the coil would never be completed. Enraged, the father murdered the son. And grieving, he abandoned the temple, leaving it unfinished. Another version of the legend suggests that the father was trying to impart the skills of the trade to his son. As his son disobeyed his father's orders and began sculpting inside the inner chamber, this led to the son's death at the hands of his father. The Sintamani Stone is a legendary gemstone of great significance in various spiritual and mythological traditions, particularly in Buddhist and Hindu beliefs. It's often described as a blue or green gemstone and is believed to possess extraordinary powers and blessings for the possessor. According to legends, the Sintamani Stone is a sacred gem that fell from the heavens, originating from a distant galaxy. It's associated with the mythical kingdom Shambhala, a hidden realm of peace and enlightenment. The stone is said to embody the essence of compassion, wisdom, and spiritual illumination. In Tibetan Buddhism, it represents the enlightened mind of the Buddha and is often depicted as a jewel on the foreheads of deities and Buddhas in artworks and statues. It's also believed that Shambhala is guarded by the power of the Sintamani Stone and that only those with pure hearts and good intentions can access its wisdom and treasures. The discovery of the Sintamani Stone would lead to the revival of ancient rituals and practices, as well as the creation of new ceremonies and celebrations. The Cochino Stone, located in Scotland, is an archaeological site featuring intricate cup and ring markings. Discovered in 1887, it's considered the finest example of Bronze Age rock art in Europe. It contains over 90 carved cup marks, including cup and ring marks, reportedly dating back to 3000 BC. Due to repeated acts of vandalism and people walking over the Cochino Stone during the 1960s, archaeologists decided to bury it in 1964. The stone has remained underground ever since now covered with vegetation and surrounded by trees. Meanwhile, the original meaning of the carvings of the stone has been lost. Some suggest that the markings formed an ancient form of writing, while others propose religious or spiritual significance. The Holy Grail is a legendary artifact often associated with the Christian faith and the story of the Last Supper. It's believed to be the cup used by Jesus Christ during the meal and has become a powerful symbol of divine grace and eternal life. The quest for the Holy Grail has been a popular theme in literature, art, and folklore for centuries. The Nantios Cup, also known as the Holy Grail of Wales, is a wooden chalice located in Nantios Mansion in Wales. It's claimed to be the actual Holy Grail brought to Britain by Joseph of Arimathea. The cup gained popularity in the late 19th century, when it became associated with miraculous healing powers, attracting pilgrims seeking its alleged restorative properties. The discovery of the Holy Grail would reignite interest in Arthurian legends, medieval literature, and the symbolism associated with the Grail. If the Nantios Cup was officially recognized as the Holy Grail, it would likely become a significant pilgrimage site and tourist attraction, drawing visitors from all around the world. Do you believe that these mythical discoveries actually exist? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.